So today I had to get out for a hike. Somewhat disappointed, there's a Juniper Prairie uh, campground a ways down, and I was going to park there and do the Florida Trail, because I've already done the Sherling Trail. And um, they said, well, that'll be $7 to park your car here. I said, well, I'm just going for a hike, man. I said, I, you know, do you have some sort of discount? I forgot to tell them that I have a National Park Pass and a State Forest Pass. I'm not sure if that would get me uh, anything off on that price, and I'll check on the way back. But anyway, we made a video here before, but it's always good to see it at a different time of the year. Um, this is March uh, 23rd, 2023. So uh, I naturally, I don't have my bear spray. I, I don't know. I didn't think about it. I uh, need to just put it in the car so that I have it at all times. But uh, let's just read a little bit here. Um, the Juniper Prairie Wilderness is one of the most diverse ecosystems in the Ocala National Forest. The Florida National Scenic Chair near Juman Springs provides access to prairies, pine flatwoods, a marsh, dense forest composed of palms, swamp, hardwoods. And I'll let you read the rest of that. Let me get it up close here and just pause it there. And then the history of the island. By the way, remember the uh, movie, The Yearling, that, that was filmed here, I believe. And uh, there's a sign that we're going to get to that's going to talk about that. So, uh, and then, of course, keeping the will to do your part. So undeveloped uh, federal land retaining its prime, primeval character and influence without permanent improvements of human habitation, where man himself is a visitor. So anyway, uh, so this is, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see, this is, I don't know, I don't know which campground I came past. Yeah, it was on 40, so this is the campground, this is the Juniper Springs Recreation Area, and you can see the, well, the Florida Trail runs through here. Doesn't show it on the map though, does it? Huh, that's kind of weird. But anyway, I'm gonna just go around, um, try to do a little different today. Uh, I'm trying to see the loop. Where, where are we? So we're right here. And so I think the last time I came, I just went up, did this, and then came back. So maybe we'll hike up uh, this way. And of course, yeah, see here's the Florida Trail coming down this way. So I don't know, I've only got about three hours today and uh, um because i got here late it's like about 3 30 in the afternoon stays light now till almost uh, 7 30 or 8 o'clock but i don't like to hike out uh, too late like i said there is a chance we'll encounter a bear just me and one other person here let's get going so this is the very first part of the trail uh, lots of footprints you can tell uh, a lot of people will just come in uh there is a i, I think there's a campground across the way there I uh, know it's an area, I'm pretty sure that's a campground, and uh, they just come over here and they'll just hike up a ways and look at the sign to talk about the yearlings, and uh, sometimes they don't even do the whole trail. And it is kind of weird back here, I hope I can remember. You can get lost, <laughs> you know, well you saw it. You got the Florida Trail going off to the right and the left, and we're coming up on the sign here. Uh, I'll get a video when I get to the sign and we'll, we'll, we'll read about the uh, the movie that was made here, hold on. All right, so Pat's Island was named after its first postmaster, Patrick Smith, who settled there in the 1840s for the unique relationship between longleaf pine and sand pine scrubs ecosystems. Pioneers who settled there called the place an island because of the sea of scrub surrounding. Then I'll let you read the rest. You can pause there. Kind of a cool wild turkey. Listen for the male voice, gobble, gobble, gobble. Of course, they got the bear there. <laughs> I hope we don't see one of those. Oh man, I'm telling you. So this is the uh, this is the map. I'm trying to remember. Uh, but yeah, so we are here. Okay. So you come up. I think I did this Jody's trace, and then I came around this way. So what I'm thinking is maybe we'll come up to here, go down Major Churchill Road, come up to here, come down the Florida Trail, and then come back this way. Hopefully that'll work. Like I said, let's see how far that is. Uh, it's not that far. He figured maybe five miles. We'll get that in, no problem. In fact, uh, what we might do is come down here and just go a ways down. Maybe just get to this open area, see what that looks like. Looks pretty cool. And then this talks about the uh, the author, uh, Marjorie Keenan Rollins, was fascinated by the beauty of the island and the colorful life of its inhabitants. She stayed with the last two, Calvin and Mary Long, in October of 1933. And then the, there's the 1939 Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Yearling. And, uh, and I'll let you read the rest. Uh, but 
just pause there and if you want to read this uh, you can pause there and then of course this is I guess that's a picture of her forest pioneer talking to Mark yeah that's her right there Wow that's pretty cool they got a picture of her you know I've never read the book the yearling have you I'd be, um, be an interesting read especially since I'm here all right so um, let's get going uh, by the way, <laughs> Biden lies. <laughs> Somebody, I, I don't appeal of graffiti, but uh, at least that's good graffiti. All right, so let's get going. Uh, this is um, this is going to be interesting. Now, I, I do recall that this is kind of a sandy, just uh, brushy area, and once we get a transition, uh, we'll get a or a turn when we get to the turn. And it is nice that they number the posts. Uh, you can get a map. I didn't get one because I've already been here before. Uh, and you know, it's just a loop. Uh, you just go around. There is some pretty neat stuff to see on this trail. Let's just enjoy the day. We're going to be here about three or four hours. So I wanted to give you the time. Uh, it was about 3.10 when I started hiking. And of course, we were, were reading the sign. And I'm only doing, I had a half a whopper. Uh, so sitting heavy on the stomach. So I'm not moving more than about two and a half, three miles an hour tops. And uh, But uh, I just wanted to give you the time frame on the hike. So it's about 3.40 now. So... Uh, more of the same, still haven't made the right hand turn to uh, to go around the loop. So we're just still more or less talking out. Now you can see it's a well-traveled trail. That's why I don't expect to see any bear. There are lots of human scent along this trail because it uh, does get some activity. I imagine that person in the pickup truck is out here. I did want to show you this. There's pl various places along the trail. You know, if you're a backpacker, I don't think anybody would have cost you. You could always come out here and spend the night uh, you know, and not be too far from your car if you wanted to just uh, and then do the trail the next day uh, I know that when I was young and working for a living, you know, you, you get off on a Friday drive out here You know, let's say it's a couple couple three hours or so get here just before dark get that tent set up Next morning get up and uh, and just start hiking You know get back uh, around, you know five or four o'clock or three o'clock or whatever break camp Head on out, you know, and had one hell of an adventure. So just uh, just things that I used to do. Wish I could do them now, but I'm getting in better and better shape. I'm honestly, I'm wondering if I'm getting a little more feeling in my finger. If you didn't know, I broke my neck uh, back in May. Miracle that I'm walking, and uh, especially that I'm hiking. And uh, this will be a big hike uh, for me today. But got to keep pushing it. This is the, my passion: outdoors with Kirk outdoors with Kirk so here you go I'm about well I kind of lost some time I met those people from that truck in the parking lot and uh, but you can see uh, this be a nice little camping area looks like people have camped here I don't see any fresh ash but it uh, looks like uh, either they spent a day here and just had a fire or uh, who knows but just continuing along it's kind of more of the same although we're getting into a more of a wooded type of look I see this post up here this could be the turn I'll get a clip there if that is the turn uh, and, and I'll talk about the previous hike uh, you can see there's another I guess that'd be a sinkhole I suppose uh, huh it, it, but it looks like it's dug out I don't know it doesn't make sense to me and I don't think that's a trail <laughs> but I will uh, we'll talk about it in just a second so now if I had a map because I recall the, the last time I was here, I think it was in the summertime, and this was all grown over, and I didn't even think it was a trail, even though that thing was there, although I came back this way, but I'm going this way uh, first, and this is called Jody's Trace. Jody's Trace, you can see the arrows pointing to the right. I went straight. I know this is better cut in, at least it was at that time, last time I did the trail, but we're going to go right, uh, so we're going to the loop. And they did confirm it's about uh, five miles. Of course, they, they were much better prepared than I am. Had a whistle to make noise. Uh, backpacks with lots of water. <laughs> I've got neither. Uh, you know, I, I hydrated very heavily. I figure it's just a five-mile hike. But like I said, it's a hot day. You shouldn't be back here without water. That's for damn sure. But, you know, sometimes I like having that backpack off. And if I just know that I'm going to do, uh, you know, I could either take the first loop back or the second loop, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, if I get feeling dehydrated, I'll just take that first loop. But you can see it's kind of tight through here. And in the summertime, this really grows over because they don't really maintain it. 
uh, you know, and even now at this time of the year, this is, uh, you know, March 23rd, it's still pretty tight. But look at the different look. We're getting into kind of a piney forest after hiking through all of those, uh, the bush, bushy area. Pretty cool transition. Look over here. Boy, I tell you, you are back here. <laughs> You're in the Akala National Forest, baby. And I know one thing. I will never see another person on this trail the rest of this day. Nobody comes out this time of the night, or the evening, because I like hiking in the evenings. Uh, I've already encountered the only two people that were here. So I'm on my own from this point on. Bears, beware! All right, it's kind of a transition. Look at the uh, saw palmettos along, among the... Uh, the pine trees really cool different look you can see the trail is uh, extremely well marked uh, that's probably recent paint because i don't remember it being this well marked before because i a couple of times i took wrong turns but like i said that was in i think it was in the summertime and uh, you couldn't hardly tell what was trail and what was forest maybe not in this section but in other sections so anyway just wanted to get this transition for you quite beautiful quite beautiful all right, as I continue along, bear ain't the only thing you got to worry about. That's a wild pig hole right there. Although it's cobweb down in there. Who knows when it was dug? So we're just moving along more of the same. I'll get the next transition on the trail. But once again, extremely well marked. Look at that yellow symbol on the tree. So no danger of uh, getting lost back here, at least not so far. All right, we're coming out of the piney uh, salt palmetto area, kind of coming into a, another brushy area. Just a quick transition uh, video, moving along, move along, move along. So that's pretty cool. I want you to see why I didn't think this was a trail last time. This is this is after they've maintained it. You can see how tight it is. Just check out that lizard. Look at him. Woo! Man, they are fast. Look at him right there. There he goes. He's we're chasing him. Oh, there he's gone. All right. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, during the summer, this is practically uh, insane to hike. Um, but I do like, you know, you see how it's kind of winding around. That's a sign of a great, great, great trail. All right, so we're kind of coming out of the uh, the bushy area. And uh, transitioning back into more of a uh, tree area. At least I've got some shade. I am starting to sweat a bit. Uh, it's, uh, well, it should be, I think it was almost 90 degrees when I started. Maybe since it's getting to be um, four o'clock here uh, maybe it's starting to cool down a little bit but uh, I'm sure I'll be dehydrated by the time I get off of this hike all right check out this view pretty cool huh just continuing along the uh, the trail there's not much of a view on that side um, you know I, I was I'm thinking you know I am moving slow like I said because of eating a half a whopper but uh, at the same time, it's, it'd be hard to hike this fast because, you know, it does wind quite a bit. I mean, you could you could really book through here, but the it's kind of a sandy soil, you know, somewhat loose, uh, deeper in some places. So I mean, yeah, you could, you could you could probably get about three to four miles an hour, but I'm not sure you could really speed walk this if you wanted to just get out and get some exercise. But you know, I wouldn't think you'd want to just get exercise on this trail unless you live around here. You know, I think you want to take it about two to four miles an hour and really enjoy the scenery here. Awesome. Apologize on that last clip. I had the radio on because uh, that will limit. Well, it'll eliminate my ability to see wildlife, but I'm more worried about seeing a bear. So I'm just going to enjoy the, getting the exercise and being among the greenery here. But check this out. Boy, that's really cool. A deep view. Kind of. Getting, getting later, about 4.10 or so, but enjoying the day. Once again, extremely well marked. I don't, God, they came back here and put a lot of, I don't remember the trees being this well painted the last time I was here, but you can kind of see, this is the, this in the little ravine over here. Very nice. Boy, I remember this from the previous hike. This is position two, you know, taking the right-hand trail. And uh, check this out. It's got stairs going down into that I'm not sure what that used to be <laughs> you know I don't know I you know maybe uh, that, it'd be cool if they put a sign up here and say you know this used to be a horse watering 
something or other or where you come to get I don't know I mean but the thing is is it's it's weird because it's got these stairs going down into it who knows a lot of man look at all them bugs flying around in there holy moly you wouldn't want to get down in there oh boy look at this <laughs> well you can see they've been cut they've cut it actually you know and this is after it's been cut so you know you kind of it's a tight this portion of the trail is tight uh, recalling from my previous hike once we get to the turn uh, which is going to be interesting because I didn't bring a map and uh, I think what I got to do is make a left and there's a I think there's a sinkhole there just trying to I'm trying to do this from memory but this is what it's looking like now okay we've hit another transition there's the sun up in the sky hopefully lots of daylight you know I'm still surprised that I'm on the right hand fork uh, I would have thought I'd be making that left hand turn um, I'd have to look at the time it's got to be getting damn near 4 4 15 4 30 somewhere around in there so uh, you figure if I started around 3 10 uh, boy I tell you maybe uh, it's only daylight I'd, I'd like to be back at the car at 7 o'clock we might not be able to do the the outer loop uh, we'll see I should be coming up on the turn here soon but I wanted you to see the transition here pretty cool wow check this out another crazy transition the trees have really thinned out through here huh wonder why maybe they logged this at some point but uh boy i tell you i got this new um t-shirt i that's a sad thing I, there's all kinds of t-shirts that i want to buy and lots of people on youtube advertise t-shirts that got great stuff on them but I, I will not buy a t-shirt without a pocket and then so i thought i'd make my own and i've called a couple of different companies that make t-shirts for people to sell because i was going to sell them myself and i can't make them without a pocket and i would never sell something that i would never buy myself i guess that's kind of a standard of mine but i tell you this is a it's a this t-shirt was somewhat expensive uh, I want to say about 20 25 dollars and uh, it's a cotton polyester blend and I tell you it's nice and cool I'm feeling it a lot better than a 100% cotton blend now of course you know merino wool being the best uh, those are really expensive but uh, you know today I, I guess I wasn't really planning on in the back of my mind I was thinking I would like to go up to the yearling trail but then I thought well no I'll just do that section of the Florida trail which you know, you do that as long as you want. That's a linear hike. You know, here you're on a loop, so you got to at least do the entire loop. Oh, by the way, I passed uh, position three, so that's good that they marked that. Um, so, you know, if you had a map, you could look on the map and see, you know, how far along you are. And if you're getting tired, you could always turn back probably. Uh, but I'm just continuing on. So we'll be coming up, I assume, on position four. And uh, so, you know, if you gonna hike it you know bring a map and then you can figure out where you are and how far you're gonna go and how many loops you're gonna do whether you're gonna go up on the Florida trail lots of options here lots of options for somebody who fell down the stairs and busted his head and had suffered brain damage my damn memory is pretty damn good so that we just coming off of Jody's Trace uh, SR19 you know they, well that's saying you can go that way to get back to SR19 so then we're coming to here and this is nice because it has this post here, SR19 that way, and SR19, you know, on Jody's Trace. And then this is going to the right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the right fork and hike about a half an hour up in there. And if we don't get to, uh, to make, be able to make a left on the Florida Trail, then I'll just turn around and linear hike back to here. And then we'll take this, and then this will loop around, and then we'll head on back. But I wanted to show you, because I couldn't believe my memory was so good, this is that sinkhole that I was telling you about. Isn't this cool? Uh, they got this little viewing area where you can just hike around here. Let me get, uh, I'll just get to the second level. You know, I'm surprised they don't have a, you know, like a fence up so that people don't fall. You know how it is when you, when you go to these uh, well-traveled parks and stuff? I mean, look what it would take to get down to that level. I mean, yeah, and you know, you could... You could slip slide in. Oh, it looks like people have climbed down there. I guess if you were a young kid, that'd be a fun adventure to climb down that. I don't know why you want to get down there, but that's the huge sinkhole that I was telling you about. Pretty cool, huh? That is really neat. 
wonder when that well look at the size of those trees I guess it must have been 100 years ago maybe I don't know all right so let's go a ways because I'm thinking on the map that I need to go that way but like I said I know the last time I was here I came from that way and then I was too tired and I just went on this way so I want to go up here and see a little bit this is all new adventure for me and I love new adventure so we're just going to go a ways up here uh, and there's a post there it says position I think that says a five on there so if you had a map this would tell you exactly where you are so like I said I'm going to go a half hour up here and hopefully we're on the kind of the second loop and then I'm going to take a left and then come back down and then you know so make it a a bigger hike we'll see what happens so here's five and then there's a number six up there I don't know why they have two posts so close together kind of strange I think I'm, I might be seeing some bicycle tracks so maybe somebody's been back here mountain biking I don't know if that's uh, permitted or not but catch me if you can, right? <laughs> like I said, there's no possibility in hell that I'm going to see anybody the rest of this day. No way. So I guess I should get a time. All right. This, it's got to be about 420. So at 5, let's see, 420, 510. 510, I got to turn around and head back if I haven't hit the, uh, the turn. But like I said, this is all new to me. I have never been through here. And why there's a post with a 6 on it, I have no idea. I want to be quiet for a minute because as I go this way, literally getting further and further, I mean, the Ocala National Forest is massive. And uh, we are, well, we're miles from Service Route 19. And if you go all the way down to 40, good Lord, I don't know how many miles that would be. And so as I continue hiking this way, you see the bird up there? We're just, uh, we're going deep deep into the Ocala <laughs> National Forest. I just hope the mud ticks aren't out. God, I just never forget that one adventure where they were all over me. Holy moly. Uh, you know, it's, I know it, I, and I've talked to the locals. They said it's pretty much year round, although I imagine they're much more suppressed, at, you know, back in January and February. Of course, we're, we're getting near the end of March, you know. I, I, this would be, ooh, that scared the shit out of me, that bird. <laughs> what are they, they called those, um, those hen things? Gosh, dang it. Anyway, you come across those from time to time, and they make a hell of a lot of noise when they take off and, you know, make you jump out of your shoes. But check this out. This is, uh, this is what, it, this is all new. Never made, this is virgin video. Like I said, I'll be pulling, I'm moving everything over to Outdoors with Kirk. It's a slow process, because I also have my channel called The Burn. You might want to check that out. That's a political, geopolitical uh, commentary that I try to put on daily. But it's tough because, you know, you got to roam around the news and get everything you can to, to put on the burn. I'm trying to keep the channels completely separate at this point. I don't talk politics in these hiking videos. See the bird again? Yeah, pretty cool time to cut the video on, huh? Woo! Now, not too many footprints in here. So that's telling me this isn't... People don't usually come this way, it doesn't look like. So I imagine now I got to be conscientious of of spiders because uh, I knew those two people that I came across had hiked the trail, so they knocked down any cobwebs. Spiders can throw them up a lot faster than you think, but I don't anticipate. Uh, well, on going back, that I should hit any, but going this way, it's a, I just hate spiders in my face. I'm sorry, man. Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. All right, it's 16:41. So we got another 20 minutes. I'm going to go up here till 5 o'clock. But I wanted to show you what this is looking like. We're heading due west. Which, uh, that, uh, I mean, that's, that's the direction I want to go to intersect with what I think would be the Florida Trail to hike it back down to the loop that'll get us back to the car. But like I said, 20, well, 20, 19 minutes, okay, I gotta turn around. But uh, you can see this is, uh, it's, a, it's a unique portion of the trail. Imagine deer probably come through there. This is, uh, 
it's pretty cool i mean i virgin territory it's always good to to get new trails and that's what the the, the day's adventure was supposed to be if they uh, didn't want to charge me seven dollars to park my doggone car at the juniper uh, campground there well look at this what a great place to put up a backpack tent there huh god that'd be amazing Ooh, I hope I get well enough where I can start backpacking again. There's a lot of places during the winter that I'd love to hike out to here in Florida, like that right there. That would be that'd be an amazing place to camp deep, deep in the Kala Forest. It'd be scary at night by yourself. Uh, I don't think that, well, at least I wouldn't get kicked by a moose like I did on one trip in my tent. Uh, or, you know, you might hear some, some wild craziness. Uh, of course, if you watch the movies, a bear come and pull you out of the tent <laughs> you know you never know out here all right man but uh boy this is uh i mean i am whoo, way off the grid way 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 off the grid and i i'm not getting dehydrated yet but uh, i imagine i'm going to be real thirsty by the time i get back you know once again bring some water i should have i just didn't want that backpack on and i figured you know a couple couple hours after hydrating extremely well now don't get me wrong i mean i drink i drink a hell of a lot of water and uh not a not an ounce has uh, come out the other end so that means it's all still in me coming out the pores cooling me off so we're good we're all good so i was right so i tell you i love these posts because they actually give you information they just don't you know it's good to have a number on them if, if you got a map so this is saying i don't know what fr means freedom route <laughs> it is florida freedom route 46 is that way or fnst have to get home and then of course it says the yearling trail to the left so we are doing the outer loop which is good and then of course this is sinkhole sr19 uh so it'd be fun to spend a whole day you know as i get better and i uh, maybe get on a map especially if you had like two this is where to having two people with two cars would be really cool because what you might be able to do and i'd have to look see where how far this fr46 is or this FNST, whatever that means. And you could park one car at that end and the other car at the Yearling Trail entrance and uh, and then hike it, you know, do a linear hike the whole way. But uh, like I said, I'd have to... Maybe when we get back to the map, we can see what this, uh, this FR46 is. But we're just going to head back towards the Sinkhole Trail. Uh, just doing the outer loop here from the sign. And I think we're going to have time to hike down to that uh, that, that open area that I showed you uh, on the Florida Trail. Obviously, uh, you know, we're on the Florida Trail at this point. So that's great. Uh, even, you know, and this will take us back to the sinkhole loop. So man, I tell you, it's, it's working out great. I'm, 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 I'm real glad that, uh, that I haven't made any mistakes so far. Because uh, it will be, um, let's see, five, six, seven, probably be seven o'clock before I get back to the car. So we'll see. Man, I had to get this on the video. Look at this. See, it looks like there's a little trail. Somebody has to have backpacked and camped in this spot. This is just perfect. The only thing, well, you can see, yeah, there's a fire right there. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I bet uh, I bet a bunch of the um, the backpackers they know this spot because you know they you know when you backpack you know a lot of times it's in groups. You talk to other backpackers and they'll say, oh man, there's this great spot coming down the Florida Trail from FR46. And, uh, you know, that's where we camped along the way. I mean, it's it's like it's almost cleared out just for that purpose. So uh, the only thing missing would be uh, if they could get a, you know, I always say helicopter picnic table in here, man. You know, uh, and then you could put a, you could put a fire pit here, but where the hell would you get your firewood? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. I guess, you, you know, you could probably put together a little fire, you know, those sticks there. But, uh, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, hiking the Appalachian Trail where you can just go out with a saw and, you know, cut down all the, the dead brush. I mean, you could, I'm sure you could find enough for a fire, but uh, it, it, depending on how well tra the travel is, once you cut out that underbrush, you're not going to find much more. But I had to show you that. That's that's obviously a backpacking camping area. Really cool. So getting too much video. Another transition. I uh, came from well that. I'm sorry. The transition was this this the gr undergrowth here was kind of over top of the trail. It was like hiking through a tunnel. But I kind of shown that to you. You know uh, with the uh, 
the look from that um, camping area. And uh, we're just continuing along. I wonder if that used to be a post of some sort. Who knows? Uh, now you see the, the trail, there's been some bicycles through here, or I got to thinking about it. These could be, you know, I bet the rangers, you know, probably have to travel these trails maybe once or twice a week, you know, because you can survive uh, hopefully about a week, uh, you know, if, if, if there was a person down and they were stranded out here. So they might just come through here, you know, every now and again. And I bet, you know, using like one of those electric bikes and, uh, yeah, what a job. Wouldn't that be a great job? <laughs> I, would like, I like that job, I tell you what. I, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing because I can't imagine a mountain biker being all the way out here. But, uh, I mean, it, well, you definitely could do it. I mean, good Lord, some of them guys ride 50 miles in a day. Uh, I, I, so, I've never been that buff. I mean, good Lord. I, I imagine on a paved trail, I think the longest I've ever been was about 28 miles on a paved trail. So, um, right, mountain biking, I've done some pretty, pretty rough trails, but, you know, not, not anywhere near, maybe, maybe 10 miles. I don't know. Anyway, check this out. That is kind of neat, isn't it? Not a tree. I wonder why those trees are dead. Is that a swamp, maybe? Could be. I don't see any, any water on the side here. I don't understand why there's, there's no forest there. It's got to be kind of swampy over there. Maybe this uh, this might not be too passable in the rainy season. This section of the trail, if that's if that's swampland, because that's what it does look like. Even though in this area it's kind of grown up, but uh, we got a little. Yeah, see, see how that looks. I don't know. Oh, man, I know one thing. That sun is relentless today. All right, it's five o'clock. Ooh, I am feeling it. But you can see the trail. Uh, that's one thing I forgot to comment on is, uh, you know, I was just remembering this trail being, yeah, see the orange mark, this means Florida trail. But anyway, so um, I remembered this not being so sunny. Maybe I was here on a cloudy day the last time. But uh, you are, you are in the sunlight quite a bit on this trail. There's not the big oak shade trees like, you know, on some sections of the trail. So, you know, you're going to want to wear your, your sunscreen. I hope my arms aren't getting sunburned, but... Uh, yeah, I got the floppy hat on uh, with the with the cape over the back like the Arabs wear, so I know that my head and neck are protected. I'm glad I brought the hat. Holy moly! Sometimes I come out and I'm thinking, well, late in the evening here, as the sun kind of gets at an angle, you know, you're pretty shaded. But not on this trail. I'm like, you definitely need a floppy hat and a, a walking stick. I tell you, I there's been a couple of trees I had to get over. That's why I'm surprised to see bikes on this trail. Obviously. I, I don't think they can get, you know, they'd have to just stop and, you know, well, it's no big deal. You just pick up the bike and throw it over top of the tree. But some of them guys ride really fast. <laughs> you know I mean, I hope they can hit them brakes pretty quick. Come around a corner. And, oh, damn tree. Boosh. Over the handlebar. I've done that before, by the way. <laughs> More than once. Oh, my God. On a mountain bike. You know, it seems like I was always going over the handlebars. All right. All right. Coming down. Another transition. We're still on the uh, Florida Trail, hiking back to the uh, Sinkhole Trail. You can tell I'm getting a little bit parched. Throat's pretty, getting pretty dry. But uh, this, is a, this is a nice look. Uh, love hiking on pine needles. A lot better than being in that sandy soil. Uh, anyway, so we're back into a pine forest. I, it's kind of funny, you know, one of the few places in Florida that you don't hike through the oak trees at some point. Maybe we will. Who knows? Well, speak of the oaks. <laughs> speak and you shall see. Although, I mean, it's not a hugely uh, oak area, but uh, it is uh, somewhat shaded, a different look uh, coming out. Oh, we're making the turn here. Okay, so that's the yearling trail going back. And it says FNST. Oh, uh, you know what? Well, I'll go down here about 15 minutes. And then come back and and then we'll take the uh, the yearling trail on back. Man, I'm getting getting tired. Whew. But at least I know that uh, it's uh, straight back that way to get back to the car. All right, let's go a ways a bit further down. I I like to get to that area on the map. I just don't know how far it would be because it looked uh, very interesting. You know, you could look out over this vast open area 
and sometimes that's pretty cool and getting to be late in the evening like it is uh we're getting to be about 5 15 or so uh we might see something out in there at least some deer uh who knows you know but well maybe a bear in the distance i don't mind seeing one from a distance away this is uh this is bad because i'm going downhill and by the way there was a lot of uphill getting to that spot so you do get some up and down on uh, this trail uh you know for florida i mean mountain folk are laughing at me right now <laughs> you call that up and down we call that flat man what the hell are you talking about <laughs> but, but and then the other thing that's kind of interesting see how it's kind of washed out so this is uh in the rainstorms you know they're i don't know what they're going to do this is going to get deeper and deeper uh you know because it's just going to continue to wash this down um and then I've, i have seen i didn't get them on the video but man there were some wild looking bugs i couldn't i don't know what the hell they were they were kind of an orange uh black and elongated like a like a small stub of a cigarette you know and uh i was like man, what the hell kind of bug is that you know i just i just well in florida you know kind of like being in the mojave desert you know i was worried it might sting me <laughs> you know I mean? I mean you know because a lot of stuff here will either bite or sting you one or the other or get in your face you never know all right it's getting kind of sandy like i said i'm going to give this 15 minutes this way and then uh well that's adding a half an hour to the trip and and then that'll be it we'll get some video on that the section that i hadn't done before and then once it uh, connects to you know the, that stick coming out uh, of course that'll be the end of the video and maybe i'll make a final clip but let's let's just enjoy you can kind of see uh wow check this out a good time to cut the video on this is a nice view huh Look at that. Wow. You know, this might be the area on that map. Huh. Maybe this is that open area. I'll be done. Maybe I don't have to go so far. Well, I'm going to go a ways further anyway. I want to get a brutal hike in. So this has got to be it. And uh, if I'm not... I thought I saw a glimpse of coming down here some water. Maybe right in there. So maybe that's kind of a swampy area. So yeah, I mean, you, you definitely, if you're hiking the Yearling Trail and you get up to the Florida Trail, definitely come a ways down before you can, you hike back just to see this. It's beautiful. So this has got to be the open area on the map. I'm still going to continue down a little further just because I, good Lord, I don't want to get back too early. You know, like I said, I was shooting for about 7 o'clock getting back and I dare say from, from up at the top there, uh, probably looking at 6.30 at this point, so uh, let's just keep going. Well, I know this video is getting long, but check this out. I'm not too far down from that open area. Boy, am I glad that I kept going. Check this out. This is a totally different look. You know, kind of a really tight, small tree area. You know, it's uh, this kind of totally different look. Totally different look. Uh, this is... Uh, Boy, I tell you, I wonder what, I got no deer go through that, but I don't know how they do it. So this is, uh, this is pretty cool. All right. All right, I'm a ways further along and I'm going back down the hill. I'm going to turn around shortly. I won't get the clip of me turning around. And then the, uh, I guess the next clip will be once we make the turn back onto the, uh, the yearling trail or the yearling outer loop trail i guess i should say but uh i'll tell you what this is uh, definitely worth another trip out just to come out and make this left and spend a day hiking down this direction i mean look at this this is really really cool i you know wow i'm glad that i came down here a ways just to kind of see look at that tree kind of wild huh to kind of see what this looked like but uh it's been really cool, so I think it's time to time to turn back. Gosh dang it! You know you want to keep going and going, but your body just won't cooperate. At least not mine. Not after a broken neck. If I hadn't broken my damn neck, I'd, I could get out here and just hike all day. Look at this another open area. Maybe we'll get a better view. I could hike through here. Let's get a let's get a view of this. Wow, that's pretty cool, huh? Let me get the video up. I 
something here I can probably get through. Man, it's gonna be tough getting back out of here. Oh man. Ah. Here we go. Ooh, what I do for my videos. Look at that. Boy, I bet in the evening you probably see some deer in there, huh? That is really cool. Well, good spot to turn back. All right. All right, that was all uphill. <laughs> Getting back here. But I wanted to show you, I'm at position eight. Wouldn't be a bad place to put up a tent. But it's coming down to something here. Let's check it out. Well, it's just another sinkhole, but I don't understand why they felt a need to come all the way back here and put a fence around it. I mean, who's hiking this way? Would you fall in that? Maybe, maybe if you get down in there, it's like quicksand or something. I don't know. Looks just like a little hole to me. Kind of weird to put a fence up around that. I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. I just thought it might be something to see. All right, so we're, we're back in virgin territory for me. Anyway, this is a section of the Yearling Trail that I've never hiked before, obviously, because that was new. Otherwise, I would have just told you about it, but we are getting some oak trees here. Check out this nice tunnel effect now that the sun's come down a ways. Uh, boy, it'd be good to take this hat off and let that breeze uh, hit my sweaty head. Looking forward to that. Uh, in fact, I think I'll take it off right now. So because this is uh, virgin territory for me, I wanted to get a quick clip uh, about five minutes further along in this section of the uh, yearling trail that because uh, once we get to the, uh, the fork, there will be no more video. So we might as well get as much as we can before we get back to that, uh, that section that'll just take us back to the parking lot. But this is what it's looking like. Pretty cool. All right, looks coming up on a, still on the uh, the virgin trick of the trail, uh, you know the um, the outer loop I want to call it of the uh, yearling trail, and uh, you can see I'm coming up on a transition. I wanted to to get this on the vid because I could see it from a distance. Pretty cool. So uh, let's take a look at the sun. It's behind me, so I'm heading east. So that's good. If you ever out and you're not sure what direction you're going, the sun always tells you. Well, unless it's a cloudy day. <laughs> you know how to get on the uh, computer and uh, start pointing out how you would navigate on a cloudy day. I'm sure there's, uh, you know, you always see those tricks on a video and then you never remember them, like the, the putting the stick on the ground, because if it's high noon, you know, you can put, if you, but you got to get, it seems to me you'd have to get the stick. How are you going to get it at a 90 degree angle or be sure it is? Uh, and then which way the, the shadow goes, you know, how do you know if the sun's on the left or the right or the uh, east or the west of the stick? You know, if it's, if it's near noon, I guess if you, if you know it's just past noon, it should, should cast the other direction. So anyway, that's what it's looking like. Woo! Feeling it. Feeling it. Feeling it. All right, this is a neat transition here. Check this out. With the plant right in the middle of the, of the trail. Yeah, you don't really see that often. Usually the trails, you know, it's it's not often you got to cut to the left or the right of a of a plant right in the middle of the of the trail because you know people trample them down, right? All right, so this is it. This video has gotten way too long, but I just wanted to get this. This is really really cool. Maybe it's the evening sun, but you kind of got these like that section uh, going down the Florida Trail, you know. So I I tell you, if you come. I would definitely do the outer loop of the yearling trail, uh, you know, because it's uh, it adds a lot to the hike. Because you saw what it looked like on the inner loop, and uh, this is this adds a lot more transitions. I think it's uh, definitely worth the extra hike. All right, just came from there, kind of opening up here. Came up a hill, a little hill, and uh, this is kind of what it's looking like. I'm surprised that I'm seeing. So many wild uh, transitions just on this little section of trail. I apologize, this may have to be two videos. All right, hopefully this will be the last clip. Uh, you know, I, we're up, uh, even in Florida, you know, when you hike up a long ways, you can tell I'm on top of a hill. And boy, if you had a tent, 
you know, because you're coming up, 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 up to get to here. But look at this. That'd be a cool place up here on top of the hill, looking down in all three, all four directions. So, I mean, I know we, it's, you, you're, if you're up, up north, uh, that ain't no damn hill. <laughs> it is here in Florida, daggone it. I, I bet we're at the highest point for, for maybe a mile or two around, you know, looks like. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. It'd be cool. Well, I definitely got confused on where I was. We just hiked a long ways. I didn't get a single clip. But this was the section from here all the way up to the short loop. I kept thinking, man, it's a long ways. Well, guess what? <laughs> this, is, this is where we got on the short loop right here. So I missed that whole... See, that's it right there. We missed that whole section of the trail from here all the way up to the... Um, well, the last clip was what, that little teeny sinkhole. Anyway, it wasn't too too much of a transition. Mostly kind of a slight slope downhill. So if you're hiking it and you go left, you're going to be mostly kind of going uphill. So um, I'm going to get back. Uh, we'll do a summary of the... Uh, we'll look at the board and trace out where we hiked today. I'm just glad because I kept thinking coming down that, that chute there. I was going... Man, I don't remember it being this far to get to where I made the right for the short trail. <laughs> oh man, am I tired and thirsty. Oh man, I, I'm going to drink. I'm going to be like an elephant, man. I'm just going to drink water the whole way home. I have plenty of water in the car, even though I didn't bring any with me. And uh, on a 90 degree day, uh, perhaps that was a bad decision, but it was nice not having that backpack on. And I tell you what, it's nice to have a good thirst when you get back to the car. Be good and tired and I don't know about you being an old crippled uh, neck broken neck uh, dude it's actually hard for me to get in the car <laughs> I'll, I'll sit there I, maybe I should make a film of that one of these days I'm just too damn tired to put the phone on a tripod and say all right this is me getting in the car because then I'd have to get back out again to get the phone maybe someday if I'm hiking with somebody I'll get them to film that all right so uh well you saw the hike uh, you know summary um wouldn't want to be out here on a 100 degree day. Uh, you know, that sun would just bake the hell out of you. You know, today um, it was 90 degrees, but but here in Florida, this was a fairly low humidity day. And that's why I, I was able to hike it without water. You say, well, 90 degrees, man. Well, you know, without the humidity, you just don't sweat like you do in the summertime. I mean, you know, 90 degrees high humidity is a whole different ball game than 90 degrees low humidity. And uh, so that was why, I mean, it almost feels, in Florida, you know, when the humidity is low, you almost feel like it's a cool day, you know, once you get used to it down here. Uh, so you saw the trail pretty, pretty flat most of the way, a little bit up and down, uh, kind of sandy. You can see, you know, it's not, uh, not the easiest footing in the world, but a lot of it, I'd say maybe three quarters or less is, uh, you know, regular just dirt, you know, like this right here. This is, this is not too sandy. So um, definitely, if you're out this way, you got to check out the Yearling Trail. It's a beautiful, beautiful hike. And uh, like I said, uh, next time, you know, maybe you allow some extra time to go, go left and go right. Or maybe do, you know, something you could do. Although I, I'm not sure I could bicycle this. Because see, when I get into this, this sandy soil, even, even, well, this is, I could probably get through that. But the bike goes out from underneath me. And there, there are lots of spots where the sand would be too deep. On a bike but you know what if you could if you can mountain bike if you got the really wide tires you know maybe bike out there ditch the bike in the woods and then hike the florida trail for a ways you know that'd be a good way to go all right so uh that's well we're gonna make one more at the sign and then i'll do the mantra all right so let's summarize the hike here so we parked here on 19 just north of the river okay and then we came up made the turn Came up to here, there was the sinkhole right here. And then we came up to the Florida Trail. Came down the Florida Trail a ways. Probably maybe just to about right here. Came back up, came this way, came all the way back to 19. So uh, maybe someday it'd be a fun hike. Let's see, that'd be 4.3, that'd be seven. Boy, that'd be a tough hike to get down to that hidden pond camp. But uh, anyway, so we're, uh, driving out and i guess we'll be hitting 40 and heading home peace out stay free and it's good 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 to live in the free 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 republican state of florida 
in the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious. 